Chapter 2, From the Horse's Mouth. The next morning, you wake up determined to show Austin what you're capable of. But when you glance out the window, all those intentions melt away. Why does the paddock have to be so close to my window? And what right does Kid have to look that sexy this early in the morning? But I can't get caught up in all my old crush. Austin would disown me if anything ever happened with Kit. I need to focus on work. That'll distract me. Besides, Austin probably has a mile while long to-do list. Time to show him I'm here to get things done. You dress quickly, splash some water on your face, and then set off for the paddock. Inside, you find Austin leaning at your old fowl with a rope so taut it pulls at the animal's head. No, 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 this way. Morning, Austin. Kit's not with you? No, he's probably just finishing up mending one of the fences. I'll have you two team up on some tasks later. Hopefully much later. My work hard strategy is going to be harder to pull off and I'm distracted by Kit all day. Horse noises. <clears throat> hey, Austin. That fell seemed a little anxious. You think back to the day in the paddock. Lee training a filly for your first time. You remember Kit's words to you then. When she thinks of you... You wanna be sure she's only ever thinks of good things. Why don't you give him some encouragement? Come on, boy, nothing to be frightened of. You pat your leg and mimic a kissing sound. The fowl tilts his head in your direction, curious. It's just enough of a distraction that his resistance to Austin weakens. See, if you're sweet to him, he'll be sweet to you. No offense, but this is the way Dad taught me. It's the way I've always done it. No need to go and reinvent the damn wheel here. Let me try for old time's sake. This is the sort of thing I miss doing the most. Another time, Pip. This foul is real potential. Better to leave him to me. I'll find you later. Well, in that case, I'm taking Buttercup for a ride. She needs to be exercised, right? He nods, still tugging. With effort, you keep your face calm and head to the stables. When you arrive, you notice the door to the larger paddock is open. You look through it and see. All right, buddy, fast. Just like we practice. Kit's mounted on a spirited-looking young stallion, hands tight on the reins and a flash they're off, weaving between the barrels at breakneck speed. Wow, I've never seen anyone ride the barrels that fast. Hmm. In an instant, they're back to the starting point. Grinning, get past the horse's neck. The horse rears in excitement as they finish, you approach. Hey, Kit, what are you up to? Knitting, what do you think? Just giving this fella a little exercise. Mm, looks more like you're, uh, missing the rodeo. Who said both can't be true? Fair, but I'm sorry to break it to you. We can't offer a purse for the winner of today's barrel riding event. No bunnies, either. Kit fixes you with an unreadable stare before turning back to the stallion in the paddock. Shaking his head slightly. This uh, horse is young, but he's uh, good. Got good instincts. A little more training, he'll fetch a real good price. Anyway, you need something from me? Nope. I was just planning to give Buttercup a little exercise. Let me muck a few stalls first. Hmm. Already mucked them while you were sleeping. Go ahead and grab Buttercup if you want. Seriously, what's a girl got to do to show she's useful around here? get up before, you know, the sun. You trudge back to the stable to find Buttercup uh, and take her for a ride, apparently the only task on your plate for the morning. You seriously, you rise before the sun, I'm serious. After you head back to the house for lunch. There she is. Thought maybe you fell asleep out in the barn. Now you're here. And then why not uh, make yourself useful and rustle up some sandwiches? He turns to his paper, and annoyance flares through you, but 
then you're hit with a memory from uh, just after your parents died. One you hadn't thought of in years. Austin's head is in his hands, his shoulders slumped under a weight of worry. Ah, I don't know what to do, kid. How am I gonna keep it all together on my own? Imagine giving him just a clean shave, making him actually look younger. Same for him, too. Maybe Dolly can do some chores before school. It'll be easier to make ends meet if you have an extra pair of hands. No way. Mom and Dad wanted her to go to college. I can't risk her education. I have to step up and run this place on my own. Sure, I get it. But for the record, they wanted you to go to college, too. Maybe, but the only way we keep this place is if one of us gives that up. Dolly deserves a childhood. I, I can give her that. Austin's trying. I know that. They just can't shake the idea that I'm a little, uh, same little kid I was back then, and when Mom and Dad died. You want me to make you lunch? Happy to. Glad I can pit find the pitch in. Let me know what else I can do once we finish up. I'm here to help. Uh, fixing up the sandwich is plenty of help. Now, if you don't mind getting started, I have my mare to exercise. You make the meal in silence. Austin grabs his uh, to-go, giving you a two-fingered wave as he strides out the door. Is he seriously just gonna shut me down like that? I need to talk to someone who actually will listen. The guy literally gave up his future for you. Shut up. You head up to your room and dial your best friend Mandy's number. She picks up before the phone even had a chance to finish ringing. Dolly, I was hoping I'd hear from you. How's life in glamorous Thunder Valley? Well, Austin's been treating me like a child or refuses to let me help out, so that's fun. I'm afraid I'm gonna go off on him if something doesn't change. I got my degree specifically so I could help run this place. You have to know this has nothing to do with you. Austin's clearly just going through some growing pains of his own. Luckily, I have a time-honored cure for annoying siblings or exes or parents. Oh yeah? What's that? The bar, obviously. You need to take your mind off all this. Besides, small town hotties are like the best hotties. Actually, this idea could work. I knew you'd see reason. I just wish I was there to play wing woman. Now get out there and have some fun. And please try to do all the things I pretend I wouldn't do, you hear? You hang up the phone, feeling lighter than before. Mandy's right. A not out on my own is exactly what I need. What, no diamond choice outfit? Oh my god, I'm shocked. That evening, you head into the town to the best and only bar, the Saddle Horn. As you step inside, you spot a familiar face behind the bar. Lucy Freeman. Wow, it's been a minute. I don't think I've seen you since, well, it must have been some time in high school. Dolly, Dolly, last I heard you would abandon those hicks to become a fancy big city girl. I'm back for good now. I've been helping my brother and kid out on the ranch. Helping. Huh. She made a sandwich. <laughs> in that case, first drink's on me. What well, be bearing in mind that we're not much for fancy in this place? I'll have a mojito, a whiskey. A girl after my own heart. Hell, just cause it's easy to pour. That doesn't hurt, but if you ask me, there's nothing like a whiskey after a long day. Soon, Lucy sets your drink in front of you. You're taking your first sip when the door opens and a pair of people you recognize from high school saunter in. My two favorite troublemakers, what can I do you for? Uh, more like what uh, can I do you for? Like, the answer is give you the gossip, by the way. Did you hear that Kid Jackson is back in town? You still got a thing for him, Alex. Her and about 90% of the eligible women in this town. Last I heard, he was doing the great on the rodeo circuit. What on earth would have dragged him away from all that? Well, Dolly here might be able to answer that. Didn't you say Kit was helping out on your ranch? Dolly! Sorry, I like it. didn't even realize that it was you. It's been a while, you know? You... Jesus, I'm not even gonna say it. Four years. Four years out of college. 
Oh my god, you're a new person! I got a degree, that's it. No worries, it's nice to see y'all again. Sure, hi, hello, how are you? Yeah, yeah, me too. Wow, so interesting. Now, back to the important stuff. What's the story with Kit? Alex. Inquiring minds want to know, Lucy? Honestly, I have no idea. That guy did always keep to himself. Obviously, I know that Tanner, which is why I wanted an inside source. Damn it. Now, how am I going to figure out which of those rumors is true? Which rumor? The one about Kit getting caught with a blonde behind old man Wilson's storage shed? We all know that happened. Remember, Austin came in here with a black eye for getting between Kit and Wilson. Not forgetting that. Like, Austin blocked the door to the bar so Kit couldn't get in. But he had Kit's clothes under his arm the whole time. They all laugh at the memory and Lucy grabs their glasses to pour refills. This one's gonna really take a tax on my voice. <clears throat> There's so much about Kit and Austin I don't remember. Clearly I missed a lot while I was away at college. Just then, Alex slings over the bar grinning and batting her eyelashes exaggeratedly at Lucy. Hey Luz, aren't we overdue for a round of liars, guys? I'm sick of beating the two of you. I play when you find some fresh blood to make the game interesting again. Well, in that case, Dolly could join us. No pressure or anything. Might be fun to catch up is all. Um, yes, pressure? I mean, it's pressure. I want a free round of drinks. Not to mention another round of grass. Oh, uh, she'll uh, mellow out as the game goes on. Seriously, though, aren't you curious about what's been going on since you left town? I feel you want all the dirt. Yeah, be nice. Feel more connected to this place, not to mention learn more about Austin and Kit. Right now they're practically strangers. Four years. Oh my god! Austin did what? <laughs> Alright, I'm in. Back room? I can swing that, as long as we're not there too long. That's what she said. All of you make your way to the back room with the bar. Okay, here's the dice cup. There's a little thing up, but the bar games. <laughs> she hands you a cup with five dice. I'm sorry. You do a little test roll on the top uh, bar top. See what you get. Seem to work just fine to me. So, what are the rolls? We each roll five dice. Then the biggest bidder guesses how many fives were rolled. Next person either raises the bid or challenges it. Oh, once there's a challenge, we all show our dice. If the actual number of fives is higher than the bidder, challenger buys a round. If it's lower, whoever got challenged pays. So it's just a game of chicken with dice, huh? More or less, the point is to find out who's good at bluffing and who's willing to take the biggest risk. Well, in that case... What does Lucy get out of this? I'm the only sober one, which means I'm better bluffing, judging odds, and I don't often lose. I've had a sip of whiskey. You're the sober one? Okay. You realize that this won't be uh, like your monthly poker game with Mandy. You'll have to keep on your toes. The game begins. You roll your dice and inspect them beneath your cup. Three of your dice have uh, come up fives. Five, three, fives. The highest possible amount is 18. What? How? Where does this math work? Three times five equals 15, and then whatever the hell else the other two dice are. The first few rounds go quickly, with only incremental raises. Alex takes a swig of her drink and turns to you. So, when did you roll back into town? About the time you started this stupid game. Been home about a week now. It feels strange. Been back after so long. The next bid goes to Tanner. Alex looks at her with a knowing smirk. I bet. Too bad you missed Tanner's water tower streak in display. It's one for the record books. Alex, Dolly doesn't need to be hearing about that. You bid, T. Oh, um, I raised one. Looks like distraction by gossip is already underway. I wouldn't want to disappoint the old crew by not playing along. 
I didn't hear about that, but actually there's something I'm more interested in discussing. Tell me about... This one's a tough one. I'll actually go with Kit. Obsession! I wouldn't say I'm obsessed with him! Come on, Alex. Dolly's got your number there. Hell, I think you knew Kit was backing down before he knew himself. Well, I suppose I'm more interested than your average citizen. You swallow hard, clenching your stomach as you force yourself to casually ask the question nagging at the back of your mind. Do you two have history? She pauses for a long moment, then nods solemnly. We do, actually. We uh, go years back, in fact. Oh, was it serious between you two? Not serious, exactly, but things might have been headed that way. Sure, if Kid happened to remember a game of spin the bottle from about ten years ago. Longer, probably. That kiss was meaningful, Tanner. It was full of emotion. And you know, my love are full of something else entirely. Has uh, anything happened since then? Not as such, but I think it's just a matter of time. Hope springs eternal, right? Sure hope. And delusion. Whew, well, at least I'm not competing with Alex for Kit's heart. If you like gossip, Dolly, you've come to the right place. This one knows the business of everyone in the county. Lucy points to Alex, who shrugs. Someone needs to take an interest, Lucy. Bless your heart with the interest talk. Lucy's right. Alex knows the dirt on near everyone in town. Have y'all heard about, uh, Austin? Everyone loves Austin. He's so reliable, always helping his neighbors, picking up rounds at the bar when you're not looking. Austin's quiet, sure. Keeps to himself, but he's true blue. Damned if he doesn't have the best cheese dip for game days. Oh, so none of you obsess or think about Austin. All of you treat him like a best friend. <sighs> Ooh, and they don't say nice guys don't finish last. <sighs> Sounds like folks like Austin pretty well. Sure, everybody about Frank Harmon. Wait, Frank who works as our family's ranch ham? What does he have against Austin? Beats me, but they really got into it last time I saw him here at the Saddle War. They were all worked up about something or other. What were they fighting about? We couldn't get close enough to hear whatever Austin was saying, Frank. Clearly they didn't like it. Did they come to blows? Nothing like that. They had words. Austin got that stubborn look he always has. And then he walked out and Frank ordered a very stiff drink. Actually, I don't think either of them have been in since then. Unless I missed them, Luz? No, that you mention it. You're right, that was the last time I saw either Frank or Austin around these parts. I'm sure you'll sort all that out, what's going on between them, since they're both working your range, right, darling? Right, I'm sure I will. You try to focus on the dice in your hand, but a thought is nagging at the back of your mind. Now that I think about it, I haven't seen Frank since I got back. What could be enough to make him leave when he's worked on the ranch my whole life? What have y'all heard about? Oh, for the love of Christ. Tanner whistles. Which story do you want? You looked Alex confused. She sighs. Kid has been a bit of reputation around here. Frankly, it's good he left for the rodeo when he did. No kidding. Otherwise, someone's gonna run him out of town. Did he do something to piss people off? I'm sure he's been with a lot of women. He's already confessed to that. What didn't he do? Or who, I suppose. That Tanner means his kit left a whole string of broken hearts behind him. You can't be a big player in a town this small and not have it catch up with you. Which reminds me. Did you hear that since Kit's been back, he's been stepping out for with Lydia Coughlin? Wait, the home ec teacher from high school? But she's got to be over 60 and she's married. Loris saw the two of them coming out of the high school late last Tuesday night. Kid was carrying something from Miss Coughlin. So, you're saying Kid uh, was having an affair with the home ec teacher at high school? Why else would Kid be there so late? 
I don't know about Ked, but I can tell you Miss Coughlin teaches community ed classes most nights of the week, so that accounts for her. Right, my mom took her baking class last spring, so maybe Kit was like speaking to the 4-H club about, I don't know, teaching rodeo tricks? Or maybe he was teaching them pick-up artistry. Lord help us if that's the case. I think one Kit Jackson's about all this county can handle. They all laugh, but you're, you're left turning the thought over in your mind. Could Kit be teaching a class or something? Or taking one? If so, why hide it? because everyone's so goddamn obsessed with the dude. Seriously, Lucy slaps a hand on the counter, bringing your attention back to the game. All right, I'm gonna bid 12 fives. Your turn. I know the absolute maximum there could be is 18, and if I challenge her and there are fewer than 12, the round is free. I'm a challenger. <clears throat> Everyone reveals her dice as you quickly count them up. You realize there are only 11 fives on the table, which means we win. I thought, I don't understand how this game works at all. No goddamn clue. No clue. I thought it was how many fives we had, which, according to the map, just, yep, yeah, nope, I give up on this game. Tanner and Alex, whoop, drawing stairs from across the bar. Hell yeah. I'll take that free drink, please, Lucy. Oh, fine. I suppose you'll have to win occasionally. Lucy grins and busies herself behind the bar. In a moment, she returns with a glass for each of you. Alex and Tanner both raise their glasses. Bottoms up. It's been too long since someone fun turned up in this town. It's good you're back. Ain't that the truth. You should come around here more often. We'll have to save you a seat. I'll be here with bells on just as often as I can. You all clink glasses and take the shot, and Alex hops down from her seat and raises an eyebrow at Tanner. On that note, I need to grab some food before all the free booze hits me. Tanner, don't you owe me a pizza? Do I? Definitely, but don't worry, I'll share. See you around, darling, and say hi to Kit for me. How about I not and say I did? With a smile and a wave, and the two of them head out of the bar, you and Lucy make your way to back to the front together. Once they're gone, Lucy leans over the bar, lowering her voice slightly. Not that if it's any of my business, but be careful with Kit, all right? He's got a reputation, and you're just his type. Blonde, long legs, intelligent. What? I heard y'all during the game, Lucy. Kit's a player. Noted. We weren't just flapping our gums, you see? All right, Dolly. I just don't want you to get hurt. And from what I've seen, the best way to make sure of that is to keep your distance from Kit Jackson. Oh, well, then we should just close the book now. <laughs> Before you can ask her more, she's moving down the bar to serve other customers, leaving you with your thoughts. Who cares? Just then, the door to the saddle horn opens on Kit. He startles when he sees you, and then determines saunters over to the bar. Really, is he wearing spurs, too? <laughs> <laughs> Did you check this one's ID, Lucy? Might be in trouble with the law soon. Worry about yourself. I'm betting Miss Colleen's spouse wouldn't love the idea of y'all hanging around the school after hours. What in the... How'd you hear about that? Can't give up my sources. Kit shakes his head, focusing his gaze on his folded hands. There's nothing like that going on between me and Lydia. Oh yeah, then what is going on? None of your business. Clearly there's something uh, about those visits to school that Kit wants to keep private. I wonder what, though. The train of thought is cut off by Lucy leaning over the bar to fix Kit with a hard stare. I know my business. Speaking of... What you drinking? I'm not strong. Anything but... Tequila, don't worry, I know better to serve you that. Whiskey, rocks, that'll do. Before you can respond to Kit's dismissal, the door opens again, and a young man is obviously expensive gear. He's flanked by a couple of flunkies. Colt Monroe. Looks like uh, I'll need this. Rise, old silver spoon was planning to stop by. 
I'll say this for Cole Monroe. He always drink top shelf stuff, and that's all I'll say for him. Wait, like Monroe Steer, the multi-million dollar beef conglomerate? Do you, do you think it might be worth asking him about a partnership with... Leave the stuff to your brother, Pipe. Yep, he's the man in charge. You know what? I'm gonna go at somewhere. Then my conversation's a little more welcome. Suit yourself. Kids as bad as Austin. If he's gonna brush me off, I might as well get under his skin a little, too. And go talk to Colt. He saunter across the bar to where Colt Monroe has set him. Sorry to butt in, but I'm new in town, trying to make some uh, friends. I'm Dollar Steel. Colt Monroe, you might have heard of me. I'd ask if we've met before, but I never forget a pretty face. Over Colt's shoulder, you see Kit staring intently at you. A woman beside him chatters away, but he doesn't seem to be listening. Am I imagining it is a Kit jealous? I could probably ramp up that if I wanted. Nice to meet you. Your family's in the cattle business, right? Impressive what y'all have built. I'd love to partner with you. I'm sure you need a work and horses around your ranch and... Uh, let's not talk about that boring stuff, darling. Especially now when your drinks run low. It's round on me. Oh, uh, sure, thank you. Colt spies the round and moves in closer to you than you like. Before you can react, he plants one arm on the wall near your head, leaning in to whisper. We both know what's happening here, right? Whoa there, I, I think you got the wrong idea. Come on, you wouldn't have sent a clear signal if you tried. You want it, I'm down for it. Let's just enjoy ourselves, okay? I said I'm not interested. Don't be a tease. He leers, attempting to close the distance between you. His entire body whips back. What in the... Hey, you hurt the lady. She's not interested. Run on home to Daddy, Monroe. Not that it's any of your business, Jack. But she was practically begging for it. Oh, no. Kit's punch connects so forcefully, Colt topples to the floor. He winces as he holds his jaw, turning to Kit furious. Do you have any idea who you're messing with? Get out of here before I do something I'll regret. His eyes dart to you, still blazing, then he turns back to Colt with a sneer. Gladly, clientele's gone downhill lately, but if you ever lay a hand on Dolly again, I won't be responsible for what happens. Without another word, Kit stomps out the back door of the bar into the alley, and you rush after him. Kit, for God's sake, slow down! What do you want, Dolly? Back up. I can handle myself, you know. It's not about that. He was out of line. I'm not gonna stand by while someone treats Austin's sister that way. It's disrespectful. We both know that's not why he did it. Oh yeah, then why not do it? The blaze of his eye seems to heat the air on the empty street. He balls his hands in the fifth size drop in your mouth. I know he wants us as much as I do. The thing between us isn't going away, and I'm sick of fighting him. Kiss him is the option. I, I feel no connection whatsoever. Like, this book so poorly portrays the connection that we have with him, or the love interest whatsoever. And then everybody and their mother in the county is literally telling us not to do it because he's such a player. Like, I don't get it. You're not sure who moves first. But suddenly your lips are on Kit's. He's kissing you back with desperation. An intensity that matches yours. Kit pulls you to him. You can feel the taut muscles of his chest, abs, where you pressed against you. The strength of his arms wrapping around your body. All you want is the warmth that's slowly spreading from him to you. Blooming with every touch of his skin against your own. Dolly. A longing in his voice as he speaks your name as intoxicating as the hint of whiskey still clings to his lips. You dreamed of this moment for so long you fear you might be dreaming now. His calloused hands cut through your doubt, sliding along the curves of your back, then moving lower. He squeezes the soft curves of your rear and you gasp at the intensity of the sensation. Kit, that feels... 
He pulls you more tightly to him, and you can feel his desire hard and long pressing against your leg through the fabric of his jeans. Do whatever you want with me, darling. You can feel his breath against your lips, the roughness in his voice tells you how badly he wants this too. Pull him by the collar, push him up against the wall of the bar. His lips never leaving kits. You lay both hands on his shoulders, guiding him backwards until he's pinned against the wall of the bar. Like taking charge, huh? I like you. I like this. You plant a kiss on either side of his face, pressing your entire body along his. He moans as your hips grind into his. You can feel him stiffening against you. He grabs you by the wrist, guiding your hand over the front of his jeans, moving it over him. You can feel him go even harder beneath your touch. He takes a shaky breath, bucking against you as you continue your slow movements. God, darling, you can't imagine how good that feels, but... With a groan of pleasure that almost approaches pain, he pulls away from you. We shouldn't be doing this. This breathless murmur is full of longing. Then tell me to stop. He sucks in a sharp breath. Tongue moving slowly over his upper limb. Then he wraps his arms around you even more tightly than before, kissing you with renewed urgency. His hands roam your curves hungrily. You pull back just far enough to grin wickedly, wrapping your hand around Kits as you lean in to kiss him again. Where should I touch you? Here. You gasp as you slide his hands up over the smooth skin of your stomach, through the though his fingertips are rough from the ranch work, his touch is feather light. He pauses when he reaches the silky fabric of your bra as he slides his hand beneath the cup to caress your breast. He moans awfully. Oh god, kid. Damn, I love hearing my name come out of your mouth like that way. Then don't stop. Smiling against your mouth, he moves his entire hand beneath your bra. Sorry, folks, I have to censor it a little because of you two. He pulls back just far enough to rest his forehead against yours. His eyes are surprisingly vulnerable as they gaze into your own. Really? Didn't you know better than to fall for someone like me? You know, especially when the whole entire county was telling you not to. You press a languid kiss to his lips to light it in the shiver that overtakes him. Maybe I should have, but I couldn't help it. I wanted you as long as I can remember. I want you more every minute. God, darling, hearing you say that. You kiss your way along his jaw, moving up to breathe lightly in his ear. You want me to, don't you, kid? I want... I... He shakes his head, wrenching himself away with a pained look in his eyes. It doesn't matter. We can't do this. What? Why not? We both want this. Why fight it? He untangles himself from you, and you notice he doesn't even look you in the eye. Austin's my best friend, he's all I have, and you're his little sister. No matter what we have, this can't happen, ever. What does that mean? One last long, longing glance, and he turns and strides off into the night, leaving you alone beneath the cold moon. We'll see about that. I'll kill my brother. <laughs> I had to. I had to. <laughs> this is dumb. I'm gonna be real with you guys. This is a dumbass book. Like, it... A, a lot of people have pretty much shared my sentiment. Um, there is no... Th this is this is to add drama where none is needed. Right? They are trying really hard, and this book is gonna flop harder than anything I can think of. Um, who here has ever let a family member dictate their love lives? Right? Typically, when someone says you can't have it, you want it even more, right? It's human nature. It's literally human nature. So, when you say you can't have that chocolate, you want that chocolate more than anything. Same thing. Same concept. Everyone's telling you, the whole entire county, all your friends, all your high school people, everybody's telling you, no, don't do it. And by God, we're wanting it. It's human nature. 
right? You have to either control it or give into it. And most people give into it. Most people pursue it. Most people get it until they get it. And the, and then they got it. And it's like, yeah, I want it. And then that sweet satisfaction of everything else is either it's great or it's just, okay, this was, I should have listened to everybody. And that's how this book is going to go, okay? Like, this is crappy as shit. We're trying to prove ourselves to our brother. Well, simultaneously, we want his, his uh, gravitos. Uh, we want his uh, appeasement. We want his acceptance. We want all this garbage from our brother. And I get it. Our brother gave up college for us, okay? I'm a little guy who literally did that for my two brothers. And, like, but at the end of the day it doesn't give him a right whether he did or didn't to dictate how you live. And this is just the, the precipice, the foundation for this book is just garbage, just garbage. But I digress. You guys know what to do without further ado. Thanks for watching. Catch y'all later. Peace.